Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make this dress right here from scratch. I recommend getting a fabric that has some stretch to it because you will be able to slide it over your hips or over your head. I try to keep the design as simple as possible. I think the most difficult part of this dress was working with this material that I chose. It was really slippery, so my machine was just not eating it up correctly. I tried changing the needle, the tension, and it just wasn't working out. So that was a headache, but everything else I feel like is very simple. There's no zippers. Um, the bodice does have a lining, but the skirt doesn't since it's um, gathered, so it's not as transparent. There's a slit in the front and the waistband is also elastic. I love the design of this dress because depending on the material you choose, it can look really casual or more formal. I'll talk more about the details of the dress at the end of the video, but I hope you guys enjoy it. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel for more DIY fashion and let's get started. I bought three yards of this gold fabric from my local fabric store and thought it'd be easy to work with since they already had pleats, but it actually made it harder for me to design since I had to make sure the lines were going in the same direction. I decided to keep the pleats vertical for the skirt and for the top, I'm going to turn the fabric so that the pleats are horizontal. I draped a simple bodice with one dart on each side and the length of it fell right above my waistline. For the back side, I made sure the horizontal line was parallel to the floor at the center back and then smoothed it over to the side seam. Then I continued the markings from the front side over to the back side. Next, add your seam allowance and cut out the front and back pieces. If you're worried about your markings not being accurate, I would make a sample dress first out of scrap fabric. Normally when I don't make a sample, I just give myself a lot of seam allowance so that there's room for mistakes. Since the top will be more stretched out and transparent, I cut lining pieces out of the same fabric. You should have two front bodice pieces and four back pieces total. Sew the darts close on both sides of the bodice pieces and then you can sew the front and back together at the side seams. Before I can sew the two bodice layers together, I created straps by cutting a strip of fabric that's about one and a half inches wide, folding it in half and sewing it at a quarter inch. Using my loop turner, I turned the strap inside out. You want to make sure you're sewing with a stretch stitch or using a serger because if your material is stretchy like mine, the seam will pop while you're pulling on it. If you guys have any experience with pop seams or working with stretch material, we'd love to hear your tips down in the comments. Now that we have the straps made, I marked where I want them to be placed in the front and back and sandwiched them in between the two bodice layers. Then sew the bodice together along the top. After understitching the top, I also stretched and sewed some thin elastic so the bodice will hug my body more. 
Next, open up the bodice and fold it in half so that you can sew the center back closed. Moving on to the skirt, I wanted to keep it very simple and just gather the fabric straight across the top. That way, the pleated lines will be going straight down in the same direction. You'll need twice as much fabric as your waist measurement to create enough gathers. Like I mentioned earlier, this material is very slippery and hard to work with, so I had to gather it as I sewed instead of the usual pulling on a basting stitch method. After that, I went ahead and stretch and sewed some elastic to the skirt to give it some stretch for when I attach it to the bodice. My machine was acting up on me the whole time using this fabric and my seams were popping. So I'm sewing the elastic first, but you can also go ahead and sew the gathered skirt to the bodice first and then stretch and sew the elastic to the waist afterwards if you want to. Then fold the skirt in half and sew the open side close from the top down to where you want the slit to start. My searcher does a better job at sewing this fabric than my machine and some of you were wondering why I don't use my searcher more often and that's because the foot pedal is broken again so it's hard to control. So it's doing the thing again where when I turn on my power switch it just automatically starts sewing and the only way to stop it is by switching the power switch off. Lastly, I hemmed the raw edges of the slit and I actually just left the bottom of the skirt unhemmed since it doesn't unravel and I like the look of the pleated edge. The rest of this video is optional. I tried on the dress and it was a little too plain for me so I decided to hand sew loops along the top that were created out of the same fabric. Since I still had some fabric left over, I decided I might as well make a waistband so I have the option to cinch in my waist even more if I wanted to. And I'm finished. Here is my final creation. This 
is what the back looks like. It's basically just a simple gathered maxi dress. Like I said, depending on the fabric you choose, this dress can look more formal or super casual. You can also change the length of the skirt. If you don't want it to be a long maxi dress, you can just cut the length and it will be a short gathered skirt. Also, since I had some material left over, I thought I would create a waistband as well just to cinch in the waist more or to hide the gathered seam. Like that, and then it just ties a bow to the back side. The loops and the bow are all optional. It just depends on how much work you wanna put into your dress. I think either way looks super cute, so it really is just up to you. All right, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more DIY fashion. And I also wanted to mention that I'm starting to post more behind the scenes and vlogs on my second channel, The Cool Lerpa Show. So head over there and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.